Welcome to Breaking Ice and Building Bridges from Possibilities. I'm Kelly Johnson. And I'm Byron Jackson. Glad you're here. Connecting a community through conversation. And good afternoon. This is our nighttime. I don't know what it is where you're at listening at this moment, but this is Byron Jackson with Building Bridges, Breaking Ice from Possibilities. And I am happy to be here. That's the only song that I know on the ukulele. And I have some wonderful guests here today, and we're going to get straight to it. First of all, uh, just... <laughs> I'm getting direction the wrong way. Fresh from the anals. Is it the anal or anal? The, anyway. <laughs> Depends on what we're talking about. <laughs> Straight from the anals. Anals for me, anals for you, possibly. Straight from the anals of uh, Norman, Mr. Uh, Steve Warren. Good day, Steve. Hello, Byron. Good. And we'll hear more about you, hopefully, if I don't talk the whole time. And Miss Allie Cunningham, how are you? Hello, Allie. I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much for being here, both of you guys. This is a very exciting. What we try to do is to get a very diverse group of people to sit down and have conversation with one another. So hopefully, what we could do is open this up so that you guys are actually talking. To we're all talking together versus me just asking you pertinent questions, but I do have to ask you pertinent questions before we, are you ready for pertinent question? Number one, go for it. Favorite childhood game. Do you want me to go first? <laughs> yes. I, yes. Red Rover, Red Rover was pretty high up there, but hide and seek had an element of surprise and, that I just really liked. And every so often I could sneak a kiss with a girl someplace if I hit in the right place. And so, but hide and, hide and seek was my favorite, followed closely by Red Rover, Red Rover, which I always got caught because I was very slow. Okay, yeah. Thanks for starting that out. <laughs> uh, do you want to go? Or... Go for okay, it, Allie. So I think that for me, because I, I instantly went to, well, my favorite game was playing like Prairie Woman in the backyard with my wagon and, you know, but that's not wow. probably a game that everyone, I know it kind of got, that's kind of cool. deep. I really just opened up there. But for me, <laughs> when you said hide and seek, I really, um, I, I, I loved playing hide and seek with my older brother and all his friends, which I rarely got to do because, you know, I'm the kid's sister, six years un younger. But um, they would dress in their camo and I <laughs> would find my camo, you know, that mom had sewn together or whatever. And we play hide and seek and, you know, right before dark or sometimes a little bit after dark too. And that was a really fun time. I hadn't thought about that in a long time, so thank you. Okay, that was like <laughs> hide and seek on steroids. Camo? Yeah. Oh. It was pretty serious. Yeah, can't see you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly just hide. <laughs> that sounds great. Steve? Um, I, I mean, you, you say hide and seek, and it, it reminds me that uh, what, one of my favorite, I don't know if it would be a game, but at Christmas time, um, uh, there, there, we had like six or seven kids on my street, and then the street uh, around the block had six or seven kids. And, and we always, yeah, you know, we played football together, played baseball. But at Christmas time, it was Christmas tree wars. So after Christmas, everybody would put their Christmas trees out at the street for the trash man to get. Well, we would go and, and collect all the Christmas trees, and we'd make a fort on our street and the kids on the other street would make a fort. So then we would attack their fort and try to tear it up and steal their trees. They would attack ours, and, you know, we're throwing dirt claws at each other, and, and it was just a a great Christmas experience. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but but after that, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, playing baseball. Um, you know, we had a vacant lot. Uh, you know, close. So we were always, 
You know, in, in the spring and summer playing baseball, in the fall and winter we're, we're playing football. Uh, you you know, know, the I, kids just having a big time. You know, I read an article several years ago about how as how we have over organized our children, where you you said vacant lot and you would go to a vacant lot and we would decide. Well, I'm you know I'm Nolan Ryan or I'm this and then you now we have like adults that have taken over children's games Mm -hmm. and go no you're not nolan ryan we're going to put you at outfield and uh so it really hurts kids ability to have creativity yep yep Allie, tell us a little bit about what you do and there's so much so i let you tell (laughs) i know well um (laughs) so i i guess it pretty much sums it up to say that i'm co-founder of Happy Plate Concepts, which is a local restaurant group. Um, we have Sunnyside Diner and Taqueria El Camino and uh, the original s bs burger joint underneath our umbrella. Um, and yeah, I kind of like support, I was in operations. I mean, for the longest time, it was like Shannon, my business partner and I, and uh, our accountant, Sarah, and that's, that's who Happy Plate was, you know, at the top. Um, but we recently added a director of leadership so my job in the past like six months has really changed for the first time in mm. 10 years. Um, so, you know, I'm a little bit uncomfortable and I'm learning some new things right now. But uh, my main focus is um, like building our brand and our company, marketing, social media, uh, content building. I get to take all the photos of our food and, you know, redo menus and just kind of be creative, and um, I've been really spending a lot of time on this, like, support center that I've built for our teams. Um, so, like, streamlining processes and building out, you know, training material, just stuff I've been ha- I've had on my list for literally the past 10 years that I've never had time to sit down and do. So that's kind of what the role – I don't know what job title that is, but that's what I'm doing now. It's a good it's a good role. Is it hard for you like if you go in the restaurant and you see that like somebody didn't like set the silverware right for you to not jump over there and start managing them again or uh it used to be really difficult, but um I have learned by doing it wrong a lot of times, but I've learned that that's just not how you lead. Um, you know, there's, there's a bigger picture. The person not setting the silverware is only the result of all the other things that kind of fell apart leading up to that. And so that's not my problem. My mind goes bigger than, you know, well, is it not our culture to always set the silverware this, the same way? Do we not know the standards? Have I explained that enough? You know, all those things. Um, so leading for me is not jumping up and reacting yeah it's not a reaction reaction yeah so maybe you can help my mind to (laughs) think bigger good luck (laughs) (laughs) steve tell us what you do well i am uh the founder of a nonprofit called doing what i can and uh we're currently uh making about 150 lunches every Sunday and, and going out in the Norman, Moore, and Oklahoma City area and, uh, and sharing those with our, our neighbors that are experiencing homelessness. That's basically it. Very succinct. Very nice job there. <laughs> <laughs> I've practiced. <laughs> it is so interesting interviewing you two because I know – I mean, we have such history together. So there's a million questions I could ask, but then no one would know. It would all be private jokes between us. And so. <laughs> we'd have a good time. We'd, no one else would. <laughs> we'd have a good time. So um, where do you think service has been? The word service is so interesting to me. It's like one of our values. And why that's interesting to me is because uh, coming like coming out of segregation, where blacks were viewed mostly as servants, that had a really negative connotation to me for a long time. That I was 
well, service is just like being your servant. And so I kind of rejected that, but kind of making full circle around, I, I started seeing the value of service. And then this is just my belief. I, I really believe that um, the only way that I find personal peace is in my ability to be of service to my fellow human. And so if I don't do that, I can't like think myself feeling better. Uh, no amount of therapy has made me. But every time I offer myself to be of service to other people, I feel better. Mm-hmm. And I have no idea why that works like that. So I guess a question, that wasn't a question, but a question to you is, where do you think your passion for service comes from inside of you? You know, a, you know, a passion for service, um, I think, could could mean several different things, you know. So I think you also have to say, well, what kind of service are we talking about? You know, because there's, there's service of uh, – that you know, you have to have your car serviced. You have to have your air conditioner at home serviced, or something like that. That's your regular um, service that 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 you have to do on a normal basis to keep things going. Um, whether it's your car running, the air conditioner at home, your refrigerator, whatever needs scheduled service. But then, you know, a passion for service to me is is when you see a need out there and and you continue to see this need and and something is just slowly eaten away at you that there is a need there how do i address that need and how can i address that need in a meaningful way to that person that needs help you know so so service to me is multifaceted, I guess you want to say, you know, cause we, we provide service to our family as you, you know, if you have children at home, you know, you, you're, you're making sure they have food, you're making sure that they're taken care of, that, that they are learning, you know, how to be a responsible citizen at home and out in the world at large. I think that service you know, that you're, as an adult, providing this service for your children or, or if it's a teacher or something like that. But then, you know, you also, I, I think, if you want to get into service, you know, in a larger, a larger picture of service, that you got to have compassion. There's got to be compassion there. And to me, if, if you start off with compassion, it, no matter how small it is, and, and you start providing some type of service from that compassion, it's going to grow. It's just going to keep growing and growing until it could possibly outgrow you in the need, and then you're going to have to go ask other people to help perform this service, if that makes sense. It does, but it didn't answer my question, but I'll come back to you. So, Allie, Allie. I'll answer that question. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, um, sorry, I got to tickle my throat. <clears throat> Would you like a drink? Is that okay? <clears throat> Will you get, get a drink? Yes. I'm we'll, sorry, can we edit all this out? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll hold my thought. We'll yeah. pretend like. Yeah. Edit just this come. out. <laughs> I know, right? We'll ca- I'll come back to. So, my question was. Where does your passion come? Not what is the... I think my passion for for service comes from... Um, it, it actually, you know, in, in, in doing what I can and providing meals for our neighbors' experience in homelessness, I think started with me probably some 45 years ago. I was living in, in Fort Worth. It was summertime. And back then, it was before cell phones and, and all this kind of stuff, and I was stopped at a payphone. 
working hot. It was hot that day. And I see a man digging in a dumpster. And he pulled out what looked to me like a box from Church's Fried Chicken. And, and I stood there and watched him open that and start eating out of that. And I thought to myself, you know, th- this is just, you know, not right. And I need to do something about that. So I started then noticing people on the streets that look like they may be homeless or destitute or, or some pro- I had never, I, I'll be honest, I'd never noticed them before. But this has been, you know, 40 some odd years ago, I started noticing them. There is no simple answer with you, is there? Thank you for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But that did answer my question. We had we missed all this. We never stopped resuming. <laughs> so I got to say all that again. You don't have Good. To. <laughs> no. I don't know what I We're, said. Okay. I'm gonna edit no. that out. Resume. Been rolling, sorry, 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 sorry. It's been rolling. It's been rolling the whole time. And if, if I can figure out how to cut me out of this real quick, I will. But if not, let's just play like we're starting back from uh, right up leading up from the beginning of yesterday. Y'all. So. Well, I like this whole part that I had with Steve here. Thank you. I'll just go back to. How are you doing there? Yeah, go back to Allie. Doing there, Allie? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> okay. So, um, what I I want to. Can I comment on something that you did just say, though, about um, I liked your explanation of, you know, starting with, like, compassion. If the intent is there, that something small will grow. I appreciated that because of, um, to be honest, that's, like, a very hopeful uh, and, like, positive and and optimistic viewpoint of it because I'm learning more that intention is is important but impact is even more important Mm -hmm. and so um i've been looking more at like how things are negatively impacted with the right intentions but that reminded me that like good intentions do matter too so i appreciated that viewpoint that you had to offer um for me service i wrote this down today actually that um, there are certain trigger words in the service industry that come from like trauma and toxicity from past, you know, work experiences. And so service almost is like has that negative mm-hmm. word, just like, you know, your explanation of it. Um, and so I was like writing out all of the job positions that we have, like server, host or line cook and the different words that we could use because language matters. Um and I kept coming back to server, and I was like, uh, service, experience. We are, you know, guest experience facilitators or something, and just was kind of like brainstorming about that. Um, for me, my passion came from a need of necessity because uh, I got into this industry all wrapped around service because it was, um, you know, something that I could, I didn't have to have a college degree to do. It was paying the bills, and I was good at it, and I could learn how to be successful. So it started out with necessity, and then it turned into this passion of, like, oh, I can impact people. I can do more than just, you know, we're more than just serving breakfast. We're feeding the unhoused and um, just a safe space to, you know, after a fight or something. We're a safe space, and so... um, I am thankful for that viewpoint now, though, of, like, where did my passion come from? It started with because I had to be passionate about something. I had to pick. Mm -hmm. It was either that or sporting teams. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Which, I mean, there are choices, too. You talk about intention and impact. And so, you know, I know that with Sunnyside that you also pay attention to the homeless and you have – little sh- shelters, it's just great, little boxes. Give and take pantries? Yes, thank yes. you very much. 
little boxes little, of Thank food. you. Just, they're just going to let me dangle out there. <laughs> the tree, I'm sorry. I thought you were going towards something completely different. I was like, no, we don't have houses for the unhoused. But yeah, We may get there, though. Right, I know. Keep dreaming. Let's do it. Um, we do. We have give and take pantries. Um, you know, when during operating hours, we have this thing that started. It was called a pennant board. Um, and it happened really organically. Um, guests started paying ahead for meals, and then we had people that needed to be fed. So during business hours, that's there. But when we're closed, there's a pantry that you can give or take as needed. That actually started if, right, because you had a staff member who actually went out among the homeless in the evening. And yeah. you guys would take food and toothbrushes and a lot like you, but you, she would go out in the evening time. Yeah, she would do it on her own. Um, Stacy, she started as a dishwasher fresh out of prison. And, um, I mean, she has shares of our of our Southside location now. She's a co-owner nice. with us. And just, you know, yeah, she started the Sunnyside Street Team. Um, the pantries are through Pine Pantry, which is Allie and Ryan Cristelli. They started, they're a lovely couple that started a pantry in, um, placed one in the Plaza District. I found out about it, and we were like, you know, put one at all of our diners. But the street team, yeah, started with Stacy. Um, she would take $10 out of each paycheck and go sit with someone that was unhoused and not only, you know, feed them or bring them some socks and underwear, but she would have a conversation with them and sit beside them and make a human connection. Mm -hmm. Really cool. You know, it's so interesting because I was at a Rotary meeting today, and I get, <coughs> I love my Rotary people, brothers and sisters, but I get frustrated uh, because one of the things that they, they like doing a service, like run in, let's run in and make bicycles for kids that can't afford bicycle. And so we'll do that that one day, and then we won't be back to the next day. What you guys have both talked about is like getting up close and personal with the people that you're helping. I mean, so you smell them, you see them, you talk to them. It's not, oh, here, little kid, take a bike in. And not, then I feel better about myself. Right. And so, right. And, and that's, you know, that's what, what we're trying to do is, you know, one, meet, meet, meet our, our neighbors experiencing homelessness where they are. Yeah. And, and, you know, we want to be out there, and create a relationship with them that, that, you know, they see us come around the corner in, in this familiar van and, and, and we've seen it over and over again that, that, you know, they see us coming and their, their little faces light up because they know that we're, we're safe. We're going to have a meal for them. And, you know, we might have some dog food for them, some toiletries, you know, a sleeping bag. You just don't know what we're going to have, but, if we can just, you know, build that little bridge, you know, it may just be a footbridge at first, mm. but if we can just build that little bridge where, where, you know, these, these people that are, you know, living on the streets, they, they look forward to, you know, someone from, how do you say it, you know, the right way from our community, you know, that, that feels comfortable about going to their neighborhood and sitting down with them and, and, you know, here, I got a lunch for you. Let's visit a little bit, you know, because I find that all of them that, that I've talked to, they have a story and they want to share it with them, with someone, you know, because, you know, they, I mean, they're on the fringes. They, uh, it, it's really sad when you see some of them, but if you just offer a smile and, and just a little bit of time, you know, I'm not in a hurry. I got time. Whatever you want to talk about. Well, what interesting thing, I mean, there's just, you guys hide so much of your interesting stuff that I think is fast. What you, I think, what I like about you, Steve, is that you actually go to find homeless that are a lot of times kicked out of shelters. Yes. So you're like actually driving down alleys and looking for those who, Yep, that are they're you know, you know, camping out behind this yeah. you know, vacant building, 
you know, behind the shopping center, in an alley, uh, you know, just wherever we can find them. So where most people will go to avoid, those are the places that you see. we We try to go. You know, knowing you also, why I was asking about the passion is because I just have known you because we've attended church that I haven't been to in duly se- noted, se- duly noted. Se- several years. But I will go back one day, probably for my funeral. But bef- anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of the things, so our, ch- our church, Allie, is very, um, I, we like to call ourselves repressed, the repressed chosen uh because it's very everybody's very tight up and himself and steve uh will from the moment i've met him will go up to every stranger at church and shake their hand and tell his name and so you say that there's like a need out there which there is but there's also a part of you that says man I really need to connect with people in a way that lets them know I'm here. And I think that you have that same thing, Allie. There's something that, I mean, you could really have run your restaurant and just made money and that would be enough. But there's like a higher purpose for you. And to me, that's just fascinating where that comes from. So why do you guys have it and some people don't? I'm not trying to just sound like humble or like gracious, but honestly, it doesn't. When you said we could open our restaurant, and just make a lot of money and not worry about anything else. That doesn't seem like an option. It doesn't seem like this great feat either to just do what we can. I really like the name of like doing what I can. That's really cool because it is. I mean, everybody can make a little bit of an impact. Mm-hmm. Um you know, as we've grown with more locations and bigger teams, you know, our team has grown. We've been able to make a bigger impact to reflect how much we've grown. Um, but, you know, the first year we did the street team, we'd have 20 bags to hand out, you know, and that was important, too. So I don't know. It's to me, it's very it's simple. Why would we not? You know, a couple, a couple of things come to my mind, you know, of, of why would we not? Um, you know, y- you could have gone about the business of opening a restaurant, two restaurants, three, four, five, seven, however many restaurants, and and be all about the business of, you know, we want to have nice restaurants where we're making a lot of money. I do want that, by the way. Well, you do <laughs> want that. Yeah. That is still part you, of you, it. You do want that, but... But I, I just think that that without the other part, it would it just would not be near as gratifying. You know, the, I mean, when you don't have money, money is the most important thing to you. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you do have money, and, and I'm not saying, you know, millions. I'm just saying money where you, you know, you can put gas in your car. You can go to the grocery store. You know, if kids need a new pair of shoes, you know, you don't have any you know, you can get it, you know, but, you know, I, I just think that if you wouldn't have gone the route that you did, your life would not be as fulfilled as it is today. Oh, I completely agree with you, you know, on that. But a sure. lot of people, they don't see that service mm-hmm. that, you know, yeah, Fulfills I'm making you. a lot yeah. of money. Yeah. You know, and, and they think that, oh man, I am fulfilled. This is it. But I, I, I don't know. I hadn't done, you know, research, but I think that people that don't give back in some way are not near as happy. Yeah. I don't care how much money they have. You know, there was a person in my family that had a lot of money. Okay. And he was, he did not mind giving that money out as long as he was recognized as giving it. And I thought that's all wrong. It's all wrong. You know, um, so, you know, I don't want. I would have thanked him publicly. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> well, but that's I know. But, but it, I know you would have missed the point here. <laughs> I know. You would have. <laughs> Can I send him a donor letter? <laughs> <laughs> well, he has joined the dearly departed, mm. so <laughs> I don't have the address. <laughs> but but you know I I think the you know the, the, there are people that that. Like some people that help us in doing what I can, they don't have any money. You know, they don't have resources, but they want to help. And in doing what I can, they can do what, what they can, and it impacts the bigger picture because they're doing what they can to help us. Mm-hmm. And, and as long as, you know, people are doing however small that they can do, at least they're doing something. So it's helping the cause, whether it's your cause, my cause, possibilities, or someone else. But then it's also going to give them the self-esteem that that they need. And if they get a little bit of self-esteem, they're going to get a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And they get a little bit more, they're going to help somebody else. And then it's just going to snowball um, and, and keep growing. Mm-hmm. It's really yeah. cool sitting at um, the downtown diner I sat down for the first time and it kind of clicked what what was really happening. I sat at a booth and I could see the the pantry and I could see that all the people in the booths around me were watching this pantry and a car pulled up, loaded it up with all these groceries and went on their way. Mm-hmm. And then a guy on a bicycle came by and picked, you know, picked up some items or whatever and went on and I thought we were all just impacted by that. Yeah. Every single person. Yeah. Yep. Got got to see that, and in some way, we're yeah. affected. And you can't. You're right. You can't help but be yeah. affected yeah. by that. Yeah. You guys, our time is almost up. This oh. is when I know this has went way too quickly for me. I hope you come back one day. This is Alex. Just maybe not. But <laughs> <laughs> Are you supposed to answer that now? <laughs> It's a commitment. I'll have it. Yeah. Uh, have it you uh, said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Alex giving the affirmative <laughs> nod. I'm Steve, giving the negative nod. <laughs> Steve, you're welcome to come back. And Thank you. Not you, Ali, because <laughs> <laughs> you refuse to come in. <laughs> you guys, I'm actually very, very humbled by the uh, lives you live and the impact that you make on our community. So thank you very much for being with uh, building bridges and breaking ice and spending a little time with a little crazy old man. So thank you. And we're out. Connecting a community through conversation. Breaking Ice, Building Bridges is the Possibilities Community Podcast Platform. Thanks for tuning in.